You are so adorable. <laughs> what brings you to this beautiful garden state? What got you all started? I had a sixth grade <laughs> teacher who kind of introduced her class to birds. And I got the bug. And uh, I'd say for somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 years, I was a very avid birder looking at butterflies and uh, that's what got us here. In fact, most of the folks here, most of the NABA folks, the folks are really interested in butterflies, uh, started out as birders and most of them still do a lot of birding. Uh, of course, that makes you interested in all sorts of forms of nature and you know, you can't do butterflies without learning a little about plants. And uh, similarly, you've got to learn about their habitats and so on. Same thing happens with birds. If you're interested Butterf in butterflies, yes. uh, not all non-native plants are bad. There are some that are not invasive and some that, are, that form uh, very good uh, uh, nectar sources. In fact, uh, we have uh, one uh, butterfly here, the uh, wild indigo dusky wing, which used to feed on, uh, well, on wild indigo, which is a very rare plant around here. You do, do find it here and there, but uh, our uh, highway departments brought in a plant called uh, crown uh, vetch, crown vetch. Highways and so forth, and it's spread everywhere. It is, is that a form of milkweed? or? No, no, no. That's it's, just a it's, weed. It's okay. a pea family plant. Vetch, oh, okay. Vetches are, are in a pea family. And uh, the... Uh, 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 dusky wing, the uh, wild indigo dusky wing, found that it could lay its eggs on the ground vetch and its caterpillars would eat and survive and it made an excellent uh, food source for them. Now we have plenty of uh, wild indigo dusky wings thanks to a non-native plant. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me, I, I'm not saying that all non-native plants are, are good, but there are a few that we can tolerate. You are the man of birds. So do you have a particular bird that you love to study? Well, I have a favorite. Most people would think I'm crazy, and that ha but happens to be the uh, solitary sandpiper, which is undistinguished in most respects, but it's my favorite. That's your favorite? What do you, what do you love about this bird? Oh, I like shorebirds. It's a very long distance migrant. It doesn't breed here, it, does, it, it, it migrates to uh, New Jersey in spring and fall. It's just a neat looking bird. That's great. Well, I hope you have amazing journeys with your birds. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
Which is not wow. the same as the one that the tussock moths that are on the milkweed, right? This is a this different, is different one. Okay. Yeah, that's the milkweed tussock moth. <laughs> oh, yeah. It hatched its so, eggs on the yeah. plant you showed us earlier? Um, this one, I'm, this could be a hickory tussock moth. Uh, there are hickory trees around here somewhere. Uh, and I'm not sure there's a banded tussock moth. I'm not sure which tree is that. What is that? A tussock moth of some sort. Oh, okay. We have goldenrod right here. You will find that there's many species of goldenrod. A lot of species. <laughs> it could be confusing. Uh, goldenrod doesn't cause the allergies, yeah. right? That's right. Uh, and Sharon said that for it being a problem with sticky. So it's, this is a good one heavy. for allergies. That's great to know. No, yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't trigger the, no, the people's allergies? That's, 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 a, a, that's just a rumor. That's a myth. Okay. The uh, wind pollinated ones are the ones that give you most of the problems with your allergies. Yeah. Golden rod yeah. insect pollinated. This is a female? Yep. And that's a tiger swallow? It's a oh, yellow female. Female. tiger nope. swallowtail. Oh Just remember yellow. it's striped. Yeah. Yeah. Like a tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. Tiger so swallowtail. Patch that was in the shade, there was nothing. Out here in the sun, boom. Yeah. That's why for butterfly. There's a ghost pattern. Look how beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice look. The swallowtail. The yellow swallowtail. Whoa. This one's missing a What is this called? This, this it's a dark one? female tiger swallowtail. Wow. And there's some beautiful the colors. Back. Here's the great spangled fritillary. Look. What flowers are these right here? Which are the beautiful pink? Uh, the pink ones are trumpet weed. Trumpet weed. And the butterflies love them. With they do. Nectar juices. I like them, and apparently even more than the uh, ironweed today. <laughs> what is this right here? This is a dark thing. It's a female tiger. Uh, tiger. Uh, tiger. Really tiger. Ghost These are ironweeds so right here. The ghost pattern. Uh, great spangled fritillary. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, is, this is another dark tiger. Female tiger here. Monarch. Oh, look at them. So beautiful. They are out and about on the move, right? Yeah, All of them. This one really likes the swamp milkweed. There's a silver stock. There's a perch great spangle for people who would like to see it. Oh, is there a weather so anything? Or or possibly the oh, there's warm and very cold and snowy spring weather. Well, the, the uh, you know, swallowtails all out. over winter in the chrysalis. So if they okay. came out early and then were hit by yeah, snowstorm. Yeah. Which one is this called? It's got a very beautiful print here. Who's that? The silver spangles? Great spangled fritillary. Oh, great spangles. And the spangles are those silvery spots on the hind wing below. So this is what you're looking at over here. So this is. You know, flying past you, if you don't look careful, it could pass for a monarch because it's big and it's orange and black. Oh, but it's, it has a totally perfect. different pattern than a monarch. And they don't make the one place? No, no, those are resident here. Um, they overwinter here. Uh, no monarchs overwinter here. Or something else. Trumpet weed with tiger swallowtails. Oh, 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 here's oh, a oh, yeah. oh, the oh, yeah. colors are bright. Um, but in flying around, being attacked by birds, or flying through uh, vegetation, their wings can get tattered, and the scales wear off. The patterns are created by tiny scales on the wings that are made of keratin, the same thing as our hair. And it, they're very delicate, and they, they get worn off. Does it, so, does it create damage when their wings get worn off, when they're, for their flights? Yeah. Well, that, Yes, like uh, for the uh, but you'll see butterflies flying oh, in tatters. I mean, yes, they can't yeah. fly as well as they could exactly. when they were whole, but they keep on going. The one doesn't have um, any they're blue. strong. Very they don't give up. Oh, yeah. That's a male. And look at the one on the bottom. People say butterflies are delicate, but oh, they're, they're they're pretty, pretty strong. Yeah. Now really is the goldenrod. 
So they're kind of almost forced onto the trumpet weed there. Got like four on there. Yeah, that's really neat. The three butterflies really stick together. Well, just because they like to be together. Because they like the food, right? Yeah, they're not for the sweet nectar. They're not socializing. Prime butterfly nectar plant. Very nice. CT. Bone set. Bone set. One word. Bone set. Yeah. Bone set. Um. Looks also like a good nectar plant. A little bit. It's related to the Joe Pye weed. In the, yeah. in the back you see the, the giant uh, pink puffs are trumpet weed, which is a species related to Joe Pye weed. These are the cup plants right here? Yeah, because the way the leaves are. Yeah, the leaves are attached to the stem. You see that? Yeah. There's another dark swallowtail there. Uh, is that also a swallowtail? That's a spike. Yeah, you can have a... Oh, they're out now. It's just it's kind of a down year for them. But they are. There is a group out now. That's a male and a female? I don't know. Is that a male? Is this one the male and the female? The, the yellow one There's is a, a male. A yellow one is a male you know, and the black one, one is a female. female. There's a dark female. There's also dark a yellow female. female. You could see the female oh, in either color face. Where are you? Uh, and then the oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. There is like a ghost-like pattern. Yeah. It's beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I like it's the pattern when it's yeah, upside down. Yeah, seen in photographs when you looked at it more closely. This is real. This one's beautiful. posing for If you go her. further south in the, U the U.S., where pipeline swallowtail becomes much more common, the percentage of dark female tigers becomes higher. So they, they're definitely seen Oh, with the mimicry of the pipeline, because it looks like Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there goes the tiger swallowtails. <laughs> tiger swallowtails. What a name, right? Right, I swallow tail. <laughs> they lack blue, is that the indicator? The male lacks blue on the hind wing above. Realizing. Having snack. <laughs> These guys are just like that. Those two are the swallowtails? Yeah, tiger swallowtails. Tiger, tiger swallowtails. These two are eastern tiger swallowtails. Eastern? Yeah, there is a western, but that's way out west. We've got five right here. They're very active. If you have a garden, they, this right. butterfly is very common in gardens. Silver spotted skipper. Silver spotted. Where did he go? Uh, don't see it. And And uh, often the identification is made by specifying where certain marks are on the forewing or the hindwing, and above the top side or below the bottom side. So you have to you have to hone your observational skills when you're looking at butterflies or anything in nature um, to make it uh, the best chance that you'll be able to identify fruits or little juicy fruits that birds eat, spread them all over the place. Uh, everything you see out here, there's not a grass or a golden rod, is autumn Very difficult to, uh, to keep down so that you have an open, um, grassy, flowery meadow. These are autumn olives? Yes, not Russian olives. Okay. <laughs> and they're very invasive? Very invasive. They're one of our worst invasive species. No. And so uh, not often a welcome visitor, but the uh, flowers are good for nectaring butterflies. So uh, you can tolerate a little bit of that. Common milkweed that they lay their eggs on. But That's a caterpillar for next season? No, no, no. This will come out this year, and that one is going to go to Mexico. Okay, wow. Yeah. It, it will not attempt to reproduce here. It, somehow they know, it's not <laughs> whether it's day idea. length or whatever, yeah. uh, that it's time to uh, Okay, come so that to one will turn into a caterpillar, then right. the caterpillar that will caterpillar turn will into a caterpillar will pupate butter. in this beautiful little chrysalis for uh, 10 or 12 days, and when it emerges, it knows it's time to go to Mexico, or try <laughs> What is it? This is not a dragonfly. It's a damselfly. Damselflies close fly. their wings over the essence color, which is formed by uh, the dragonflies have their wings out black.